What an awesome time and moment to live in the history of the body of Christ and mankind. Let me welcome you to our studio here from Dominion Television in Accra, Ghana. Pleasure is mine today to introduce to you one of God's choice servants and general in the body of Christ. One that has walked and experienced God's anointing and the presence of God and operates with God's presence. We've had a great move of God here in Accra, Ghana with these servant of God and it's mind-blowing preaching to others. I felt that it was critical before he leaves the shores of Ghana to have him speak to us on Dominion Television as we reach all the nations in Africa. And one of the things I felt very important that God laid on my heart to have him speak to us is about his encounter with some of the fathers and the choice servants and generals that have gone ahead of us, that he had the opportunity, the privilege to walk with them, to experience them, to encounter their anointing, their presence, and the fact that he's an embodiment of so many of these great men and women of God that has gone ahead of our generation, that he walked with them, touched them, and detached him, and impacted him. I remember years ago, myself and my son Joel, um, when Dr. Benny Hinn came to Ghana for a crusade the first time, we were traveling with Dr. Samron, and we went to Amsterdam, and as Kipro Airport, he was leaving to board his flight, and I was going to London, and he was going to Chicago. And when he turned his back, the Lord said, you will not see him again, so ask him to bless you. So I said, Papa, Papa, you need to bless me. So he turned back and laid his hand on my shoulders, and he said, he said, let the anointing and let the power of God that rest upon me, rest upon this young man, and God keep him, keep him, keep him from harm's way, and let your mantle be strong upon him. And he prayed such a powerful prayer, and I felt God's anointing so strong that sometimes I preach and I can hear his voice coming out of me. And people like Ben Sinidahosa that Dr. Benny worked with impacted his life also sometimes. I'll be preaching and I'll hear the voice of Archbishop Idahosa coming out of me. And we have somebody who, has, who is an embodiment of some of these names I've mentioned and many others. And we just want to hear from him because this generation don't know the fathers and the ways of the fathers. The Bible said that Israel knew the acts of God, but they didn't know the ways of God. The fathers know the ways of God. So uh, we are so excited to have Dr. Benny in our studio today. And Pastor Benny, thank you. My pleasure. For, thank you. For being, for being who you are. And yesterday when I sat and heard you, you were so real, practical, and vulnerable and brought us all back to the message of the cross, which this generation knows nothing about, and we can't blame them. I think that we preachers must take responsibility of the fact that we've been so much involved in trying to be big and not trying to be great, because everybody can be big, but not everybody can be great. I mean, I see, I see you as great, not big, but great, because um, longevity produces greatness. And going through the process and being tested and tried like you have, uh, those are the things that produce greatness, which this generation don't know. It's, uh, it's a generation that want to make it overnight. Success and numbers is what drives this generation. But you are coming from a different generation, and... I, I think that we need to hear from you about your experience of working with some of the fathers and people like 
the testimony you gave about Catherine Kuma, you know, and uh, Mr. Pentacles, you know, I got to uh, know about Mr. Pentacles and so many of the fathers. Uh, I believe that this generation needs to know about them and then we want to also later on in, in, in this program uh, ask you about their children. What has become of their kids? Are they working with God? What has become of their legacy? Mm. You know, to help this generation to learn because a great man of God, you know, I will mention his name, came to me one time. He flew here with his jet and he drove straight to my office and he said, what's going on with our kids? What's happening? And I said, it's a battle over the next generation, the legacy. The enemy so hate us that he doesn't want our seed after us to walk the face of the earth. And we need to put up a fight to secure the next generation and our legacy so that when we are gone, we'll have another generation more anointed than us, uh, better than us, mm. uh, because we fought and we broke the ground and secure the next generation. So, Pastor Benny, once again, thanks uh, and welcome to Dominion TV. And Thank you. I just wanted you to so take much. the freedom and liberty and just talk to us. Well, I, would, I do want to talk about the cross because that's something that I think is so important today. Uh, the world uh, has always been an evil place. Today, though, the world has become intensely evil because of the social media, because of the change in uh, people's uh, hunger. You know, when, when I got saved in... Uh, the early 70s, it was a whole different world mm -hmm. then. And I, I worry about my children. I worry about my grandchildren especially. What kind of world will they have? But the message of Calvary is the only answer to the future. And when, when we talk about Calvary and the cross, most people probably don't realize what I mean. The cross is a daily experience with us, daily experience, where our will must submit to the will of God. Mm -hmm. What we want in life is not important. It's what the Lord wants in life. And often, uh, His will and our will cross each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, what God is asking of us uh, can be very difficult but not if we love him. Mm. Nothing then is difficult. Mm. What we have got to be so careful uh, with, uh, Archbishop, is we cannot allow the world to pollute our hearts at all. Yeah. We have to detach ourselves. We, have we can to, conform. We can never conform we have to, to the world. Transform. Yeah. So it's an ongoing daily battle. So when, when I started as a Christian, that was the message I heard from the greats, all the greats. The first person I ever heard uh, minister was Lord Cunningham. Lord Cunningham is still alive today, youth with a mission. I just saw him, in fact, a few weeks ago. And, uh, he, and I still remember his message. The first message I ever heard was on a Thursday night, February 17. 1972 in Toronto, Canada at St. Paul's Cathedral. And he spoke about how he had just bought a ship for y YWAM. And, and all he could think about and see is the ship, the ship, the ship. And Jesus was disappearing and the ship was becoming more visible. And that man began to cry on the, uh, as, as he was speaking. I had never seen that with, with anyone. That was the first time I actually ever heard a man preach because I came from a, a Greek Orthodox Catholic background. Uh, we never heard anyone preach. They all chanted the gospel and, you know, all the liturgy and all that. It was not, didn't mean anything. So uh, after that, uh, all the, the voices we heard, there was a great move of God called the Catacombs mm -hmm. in Toronto uh, with the Watsons. Uh, Merla Watson and Merv Watson, she, 
she wrote the song Jehovah Jireh and mm -hmm. others. And uh, all the speakers they would have, they had uh, Richard Rombrandt. You, you know the name Richard yeah. Rombrandt, uh, who was a mighty saint of God. I will never forget looking at that man's face shining when he was ministering, talking about how he suffered in Siberia when the Soviet soldiers put he and a friend of his in a pit in, in winter, naked, for three weeks wanting to kill them, and how they lowered their bodies into this pit in Siberia and put nails in, in the pit so if they would lean, they, 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 the nails would go in their body, and no food, no water, no warmth for three weeks, and the soldiers would come and mock them, and they could not kill them. Finally, when they took him out, n not one of them was hungry. Not one of them was cold. They could not kill them. Oh, yeah, this is an amazing thing. And, and imagine being exposed to that message. And then, dear Cory Ten Boom, who I met, I danced with Cory Ten Boom. Can you believe it? I went to her home and danced with her. I became friends with her nephew, Danilo. And, and uh, we were in her garden, and uh, some of us kids danced with her. I was one of them. And she grabbed my cheek. She said, where did you get this face? I said, Israel. She said, Shalom. And that precious lady, I don't even know if people know who Cody Ten Boom is. No. But Cody Ten Boom, one of the greatest saints that ever lived, uh, Billy Graham did a, uh, a story on her life called The Hiding Place. Oh, she, yeah. was, she, she went to the concentration camp uh, in, uh, when, when she lived in Holland uh, for hiding Jews in their home. And what a mighty saint of God. And she would always preach about suffering, about the cross. And one of the greatest things I ever heard her say, no pit is so deep that Jesus is not deeper still. Wow. No pit, pit. is so deep that Jesus is not deeper still. Well, don't go away. We will come back. You know, a guy gets on uh, TV not long ago who wrote a book. This is a preacher I'm talking about. Wrote a book. Not one mention of Jesus in the book. Not one mention of the name of the Lord in the book. The interviewer, who was a secular guy, looks at the preacher and says, Reverend, whatever he called him, not one mention of the Lord's name, Jesus. Now this guy who was talking to him was a, an unbeliever, asking a preacher, not one mention of Jesus. I heard it with my own ears. No one had to tell me. I'm Archbishop Duncan Williams. I feel inspired by the Spirit of God to call for a hundred thousand intercessors to stand in the gap from the 23rd of September to the 31st of December. Since this pandemic, too many lives has been taken away from the planet. You and I must stand in the gap. Our politicians and our scientists are doing what they can but they can't deal with spirit. Only the church, Only the church. and the believer, and the believer has what has it takes what to, it takes. Deal, to with deal with this pandemic. pandemic. It's a spirit. It's a demon. It's an angel of death. And Jesus said, "Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we lose on earth shall be lost in heaven." It is time, time. to bind this evil. This evil. For a hundred days, I need you. Go to the prayer wall online right now on Duncan Williams Ministry. Register the time you will choose to pray for 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Remember, you are not required to sign up for every watch. Choose the watch that is most convenient and you can always change it.
The time to act is now. It's time to pray for a revival. revival. We need mercy, we need to, mercy reign to reign like water. Like water. We need our churches, our churches to be revived, to be revived. One, more time. one more time. We need we transformation, need transformation. In, every in every community, city and nation, city and nation. across our world. our world. And I'm counting on you. Issachar 2021. Until prayer goes up, prayer goes up. heaven, heaven. Can, do nothing. can do nothing. That you and I will still be here and we will testify and tell the story to our children, 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 children. How the Lord delivered us. Let's get excited and catch the daily inspiration with Archbishop Duncan Williams and the voice of inspiration. There's no other way. And there is nothing else I know that works than the word of God. Monday to Friday at 6.30 p.m. and live on Sunday at 10 a.m. That whosoever shall hear the voice of the Son of God shall live. Only on Dominion TV. Looking at where you've come from in the early 70s to now, when it comes oh to the message, goodness, wow. and the fact that we don't hear about the message of the cross and suffering, the baptism of suffering. Well, all suffering you know, all who who live godly will suffer persecution. That's in the Bible today. Nobody wants to talk about that, but that's all that we heard back then from people like Basilia Schlink. Basilia Schlink was one of the most amazing saints uh, in Germany and had a great influence, still does, through, her, through the sisterhood of Mary, they're called, uh, uh, in, in Darmstadt. And uh, the same thing we, we heard from so many in those days. I mean, Catherine Kuma, that's all she would talk about. But not just these women. A lot of men preached it. Uh, David Duplessis' message was forgiveness. Mm. He would cry and beg people to forgive. That's the cross. Look at Billy Graham, what, 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 did, what did he preach? But the cross. And he shook the world. So the message of the cross simply is the message of surrender to the Lord, complete yieldedness to the Lord. You know, the Christian faith does not say try mm -hmm. or try again. Mm -hmm. when, it, when it comes to our walk, mm -hmm. God did not say to us, try to live it. Mm -hmm. He said yield. The word in the Bible is not try or try again or struggle. It's yield, surrender. surrender. That's the message of Calvary, that we surrender. It says yield your bodies, surrender your life, surrender to the Lord. Today we don't hear that. What, what we hear today is how you can make it. You, you, it's always the you, you, you. It's always pointing to the man or to the lady. You can make it. God is with you. I sat and heard a very famous preacher not long ago. I forced myself to watch him. I forced myself because I don't like watching that stuff. I said, okay, I'm going to listen to what this man has to say. It was a message of hope. It was a message that was needed if I was uh, uh, going through uh, a lawsuit. If I was going through a divorce, I could use it. If I had some problem, I could use it. But it lacked a great foundation. Okay. Not one time did he say, turn to Jesus. Mm -hmm. It was inspirational motivational, it helped you feel good about yourself, yes, it did. But I thought to myself, if somebody was in prison, that would not do them one thing. Hmm. 50,000 Christians today in North Korea are in labor camps. That message doesn't work with them. Mm -hmm. 239 million people today in the world, Christian people, are under persecution. That message means nothing to them. Mm. God is with you. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it. And they're killing them. Mm. See? So the, that message of hope today is taking over America. Mm. It's a feel-good message. Mm. It's a self-help message. 
It's not a gospel message. Mm. Our children are going to collapse when persecution hits. Mm. Because persecution is coming. Yeah. As, as surely as I'm sitting here talking to you, persecution will come to the West. It's already come to many, many parts of the world. You have no idea what I heard from uh, David Curry. David Curry has become my friend. He's uh, the president of Open Doors that uh, help people who are being uh, persecuted. persecuted. And uh, I talked to him not long ago when he told me how many Christians are killed every year. Every year. And they, they, and they die, a lot of them in the Muslim world and other parts of the world. They, they die with such joy. And the, 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 the children of these martyrs forgive the killers of their parents. That's the cross. Nobody with the message of feel good, do good will help those, those people. They are suffering beyond belief in parts of Nigeria, in India, yeah. in Pakistan, in Somalia, mm -hmm. in North Korea, in Iran. Mm -hmm. Yet the church is thriving. Today, Iran has the largest church the largest church in the Muslim world today is in Iran. That's a fact. There's more Christians today in Iran than any Muslim nation on earth with all the persecution. They, they're not listening to these American preachers telling them feel good, do good, mm. all, all the self uh, messages. It's all about Jesus. It's all about turning to the Lord, the lover of your soul, the one who's altogether lovely, when you see Jesus, none of these things will affect you. So the cross, the, 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 the blessed message of the cross is given to us in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, in John, in all the epistles, in fact, yeah. throughout the Bible, even the Old Covenant. Because what, what, what God uh, uh, spoke so powerfully through Paul the Apostle, he said, I put my body under subjection to the will of God, lest after I have preached to others, I be cast away. You, th you think about the Lord whom we adore. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. himself. Deny yourself is not a message anyone is talking about today. Mm -hmm. Deny yourself means very simple. Jesus must be first. Mm -hmm. Jesus must be all in all. Mr. Benny, you so, said something yesterday when you were speaking about the dream you have. Yes. And, and it really scared a lot of people. Good. And, I and, wanted and it to scare it people. It did. And uh, I started really thinking. Uh, can you explain, especially when it came to your turn, what Jesus did? I, when I, when I, I came out of the hospital in 2015, I had a congestive heart failure. And the Lord saved, saved, saved my life, no doubt. And I had a dream right after that. And in my dream, I saw myself standing with a group of people, all dressed in white in a straight line. And I saw the Lord standing to the right of this beautiful wide gate that sparkled like diamonds. And on the other side of, the, of the, this massive gate, I saw a lady whom I had known named, named Jeannie Klatt Klattenberg from Orlando that had passed away years ago with cancer. And she was a great organist, and she was sitting on the organ. And then I saw the Lord do this to the first person who was in line. And she played this beautiful uh, number, crescendo, beautiful. And the gate opened, and that person went in, and then the gate shut, and then the Lord did this again. And the gate opened with the beautiful music. And then along the way, he did no, he did this. He didn't speak, he just did this. And she played this frightening uh, 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 sound came out of the organ and two massive men dressed in white who I suppose were angels I didn't no one told me who they were but I'm just supposing they were they came and they took this person out of the line and the fear on their face uh, was beyond uh, description the, the fear that hit them and then the the next person went and so and so forth and then my time came to stand there I know so I'm standing in line, and I'm now the first one. And I was looking at the Lord, 
and I can feel the moment just even talking to you right now, literally. And was he going to do this or was he going to do that? And he did not, but he didn't do any. I woke up. And when I woke up, I heard his voice as clear as you're hearing mine. He said, I'm watching you. Do not blow it. It was very firm. It was a frightening moment for me. So I believe that I was on the edge. No doubt there was something in my life that was not pleasing to the Lord. You know, we preachers become very involved in the hurrah, hurrah, hurrah of the ministry. We become very involved in the growth, the money, the fame, the whatever you want to call it. And we, we, we focus on the crowds. We focus on the money. Yet we, we, we've lost at that time his trust. Pastor Ben, the message of grace yes. is so very critical. Uh, but I wanted to hear from you and to let our viewers hear from you because it is believed that one saved forever saved. No. So you can live any life you want to no. live. But with what you just said and your dream and the revelation and with what Paul said, and the, the fact word. that the Bible says that everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself, Absolutely. even as he is pure. How do you relate that to the message of grace well, how and can... just living anyhow, <laughs> anyway, and making think, it and going to hell? Yeah, think about Paul the Apostle. If I do not put my body under subjection, I would be a castaway. That kills the whole message right there of that free grace, they call it. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's not in the Bible. He that endures to the end, unto the end the same shall, shall be saved. saved. So our salvation is a continual walk with God closely. The message today that people are wanting is a free lunch, uh, uh, hamburger style, fast, uh, nobody wants to work for it. Mm -hmm. You know, give it to me, it's mine. No, no, no. The gospel, Jesus made it very clear. It's a narrow way mm. that very few will find. Mm. It's a narrow road. It's not a wide road. Mm. So today they're preaching the wide road, sadly. Let's go back to what Jesus said. And the Lord was very clear on the message. If you love father, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter, more than me, you're not worthy. Now that means we forsake all, including family, mm. including family to follow him. Mm. When God calls us, whether to be his children or whether to be in ministry, we must forsake everything, period. We walk away. Think about the apostles, what they walked away from. Franklin Graham, a few weeks ago, preached a fabulous message on surrender. Graham? Yeah, Franklin. How when the apostles and the disciples were fishing all night long and caught nothing, and then the Lord said, now let's launch into the deep. <clears throat> Lord, at your word, we'll do it. And they caught all that fish. <clears throat> and then when they came to shore, they all followed him. Not one of them said, let's go sell the fish we caught. Mm -hmm. They left all the fish behind. Think about all the money that they walked away from. Wow. I Total never thought about that. Yeah. Total yeah. surrender. When you follow Jesus, you leave the business behind. Now, they could have easily said, well, now, Lord, just a minute now. Let's, let's make a little money here and yeah. sell all this fish that yeah. you, right. you, you helped us catch. Yes, you no, Not one word about that. It says they forsook all, including the fish that filled many boats, not just one. Yeah, I never thought about and that. And followed. Well, that was Franklin Graham. I was not being in talking no. about that. I was so blessed by that. They, they forsook their families, they forsook their business, everything. Today, it doesn't, that doesn't happen. One young man working with me, he was with me for a year. His parents convinced him to go back to school and be a, be a doctor. I thought, you poor soul, you just left a treasure to go to be a doctor. Go. Mm. But such people will never be trusted in heaven. Mm. Because the Lord said it very clearly. If you put your hand to the plow, look back, you're not fit. Yeah. And you're not fit means forever not to, to be trusted. Mm. So the key is quite simple. Do you love Jesus enough to be detached from the world, to not allow the world into your heart, into your system, to cut it off completely 
that, and with everything that represents it, that represents it, including watching television. Mm. I don't watch TV. I don't even want it. I choose what I want to see. Mm. Yes, I do have a TV set, so I can watch a Christian movie that I choose to watch. But I never watch anything in my home. So, so Pastor Manny, <clears throat> Doc is heavy. Well, because look, I'm not asking people to pay the price I'm paying. Yeah. I just do not want to get to heaven and be rejected, to be simple with you. Mm. I am scared to death, if you want me to be blunt, of being rejected. If Paul the Apostle would say, I put my body under subjection, I wrestle it down, that I might not be a cancer. But who do I think I am? Mm. Yeah. If Paul said that, who do I think I am? Mm. So the, the Christian life demands absolute forsaking of the world and all it offers. Love not the world, not the things that not are as well. Nothing in the world are we to even look at and desire. And today, what is the devil throwing at us? The world, the world through the, the world. internet, social media, TV, magazines, books, and now sadly preachers. Mm. You know, a guy gets on uh, TV not long ago who wrote a book. This is a preacher I'm talking about. Wrote a book. Not one mention of Jesus in the book. Not one mention of the name of the Lord in the book. The interviewer, who was a secular guy, looks at the preacher and says, Reverend, whatever they call him, not one mention of the Lord's name, Jesus. Now this guy who was talking to him was a, an unbeliever, asking a preacher, not one mention of Jesus. I heard it with my own ears. No one had to tell me. And I didn't see it on TV. I, I saw it on my phone. It's on YouTube. So and that? the preacher said, mm -hmm. it's not my calling. It's not his calling. That's what he said to the guy. It's not my calling. I was, I, I could not believe I was, I was hearing it. It's not his calling? Then are you a preacher to make money? That's all the conclusion I can come up with. It's selling books. It's money. It's fame. It's not Jesus. Pastor, we have a real problem today. Yeah, we do. A big problem. Jesus is being dismissed from his own gospel. When your child turns on the TV, what do they see? This shouldn't be all TV is about. TV should do more. This is very heartbreaking because as never before, you and I have the responsibility given unto us morally and spiritually to take control as believers of the airways because it's a tool. It's a tool and a weapon that can be used for good and for evil. What we do with the media today will determine what becomes of the next generation. This is why Dominion TV exists. Our mission is to reclaim the prevailing culture and the airwaves for Jesus Christ. To produce and acquire wholesome, inspirational content, promoting a culture of Christian values for all generations. And that's why Dominion Television today is appealing to you that you make your resources available in partnering with Dominion Television to take command and control of this powerful weapon called television. And together we can uplift a new generation of kingdom builders. Today, take a minute to consider calling the number on your screen or visit our website to learn more about how you can be part of this kingdom mission. Thank you in advance.
Archbishop Duncan Williams. I feel inspired by the Spirit of God to call for a hundred thousand intercessors to stand in the gap from the 23rd of September to the 31st of December. Since this pandemic, too many lives has been taken away from the planet. You and I must stand in the gap. Our politicians and our scientists are doing what they can, but they can't deal with spirit. Only the church, Only the church. and the believer, and the believer has what it takes what to takes. deal to with, deal this with this pandemic. It's pandemic. a spirit. It's a demon. It's an angel of death. And Jesus said, "Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we lose on earth shall be lost in heaven." It is time, time. to bind. This evil. this evil for a hundred days I need you go to the prayer wall online right now on Duncan Williams ministry register the time you will choose to pray for 30 minutes. 30 minutes remember you are not required to sign up for every watch choose the watch that is most convenient and you can always change it the time to act is now it's time to pray for a revival. revival. We need mercy we to, need rain. to rain like water. Like water. We need our churches, our churches to, be revived. to be revived one more time. One more time. We need we transformation, need transformation in, every in every community, city and nation, city and nation. across our world. our world. And I'm counting on you. Issaka 2021. Until prayer goes up, prayer goes up. Heaven, heaven can do nothing. Can do nothing. Welcome back to Dominion TV here at the studio with the one and only Pastor Benny Hinn. Uh, we've been talking about the cross, sacrifice, crucifixion of the flesh, and the difference between the then generation of men of God and the now generation of men and women of God. So, Pastor Benny. Sir. Uh, with your experience and encounter, because it looks like for you, looking at your ministry over the years and what prophet chuck pierce said recently when he visited you it's like i see the ending and the beginning so it's like one era or season of your ministry and life has ended and at the same time a new era and a new season in the ministry has opened up for you so having knowledge of the past and of the present what is the difference between the men of god then and the men of women now and the men what, of god what, the, what do we have to do okay the men of god then were focused on jesus the men of god today are focused on, on themselves that's a fact so when i heard the Derek princes the bob mumfords Ern baxter's the maxwell whites the david duplessis the costa dares i can keep going Dear Mr. Sakarian, Pat Robertson, who's still, of course, living, and my wonderful friend, it was always Jesus. It is always Jesus with Pat Morris Sorello, who's my friend. Paul and Jan Crouch, that's all they talked about is Jesus. Their love for Jesus built TBN. Now, today what you hear is the message has so become so deluded that Jesus is not even mentioned anymore, anymore by, uh, by the preachers, of, preachers today. of today. Some, yes. And you know what is so sad? Those who are preaching Jesus are Baptists. Wow. The charismatic Pentecostals are not like they used to. In some circles, yes, they're still doing it, I must say. But overall, the, the TV personalities today are not talking about the Lord. So, what we have to do now, we have to come back to the Lord completely. And to what he said to us. Look, Pastor, um, I love the Lord deeply. I love him so much, I don't even know if I can describe it. And I do not want to disappoint him again, because I have. I've told him many, many times, Lord, I, I've broken your heart too many times. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to disappoint you anymore. I want to live the kind of life, and I often just weep, I'm, and I'm not just trying to impress anybody. 
in begging him to help me live that kind of life. And because I saw it with these amazing people, and I want it for my own self. And I'm going to do everything in my power to help people and my ability to help people understand that life without Jesus as the focus, there's no reason to live it. Like why? Why live my life if the Lord Jesus is not the center of my being and the lover of my heart and the joy of my soul? He is all we have, you know. A, a, a great old song I used to always sing to him, you are my everything, you are my all. You are my everything, both great and small. You gave your life for me, made everything new. You are my everything, and I love you. I sang that all the time. Yeah, we when don't I was sing a kid. those songs anymore. We don't sing those songs anymore. Now it's all about something that somebody wrote to make money, uh, whatever. Success. You know? Success. Uh, Mr. let me ask you, for you, what is your definition of biblical success as defined by God and heaven compared to man's definition of success because it it looks like numbers and the money and the material gains and everything is what is driving changed, ministry yeah, I, today i changed my my opinion on prosperity and here's what i began to notice it began to bother me is people began to use gimmickry and a lot of abuse of the pure message mm -hmm. prosperity is in the bible but it, it must be focused on the lord mm -hmm. why am i giving Am I giving because I'm greedy mm -hmm. or am I giving because I love him? Mm -hmm. That's the difference. When you love the Lord, you are going to give all you have. You're going to give your being, your heart, like the church in Macedonia. Give the lives first, first up. And, and then, then it's the easy to give the money. But, but what we began hearing and what I began hearing is it became uh, like for sale. Everything is for sale. Mm -hmm. And what began to bother me, Pastor, I'll tell you honestly, I began to be placed in positions I didn't like it where someone wanted me to anoint a hand, uh, not handkerchiefs, uh, you know, pressures, and they were selling them for $1,000. I did not want to be a part of this because I felt it was gimmickry to anoint a, a, a shawl that w they were telling you was from Israel, which was a lie. It came from China for a lot less money. And here I'm supposed to lay hands on this thing, and they were offering it for a lot of money because somebody prayed like Ben Ain prayed over it. Mm -hmm. I began to say, I want not, nothing. I want no part of it, yeah. because you cannot sell the anointing. Mm -hmm. And this is what it became so corrupted. Mm -hmm. now, now suddenly we're selling the blessings, we're selling the anointing, we are tying the promises of God to money. It's not in the Word. When people give, give money, they should give money out of their being, out of their hearts, because they love the Lord and love His gospel. You know, everybody preaches, Second Corinthians 8, 9, you know, uh, he that so sparingly reaps yeah, all that, fully. which we all believe. But look at verse 13. Verse 13 is the key to the whole message. Mm -hmm. It says, by this experimentation, you show your submission to the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. By your giving, you're showing how much you love the gospel. So it's, if the gospel is in that giving, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. And people give with, with joy, you know. But like, for, for example, sadly, we've all... When I say we, I myself have been in it because sometimes I was trapped in it, sadly. Is, well, now you give this amount of money and you claim the seven promises of whatever. I finally said, hold it, you can't do that. Mm. Or you give so you can be healed. Uh uh, you cannot do that. No. Or give so you can be, the, you can't do that. No. Or give so your son can be saved. Uh uh, you cannot do that. Yeah. If you want to give, believe God for the financial end of it. Okay. That, that God will bless you because that's why it's in the Paul. What, what did Paul say? He said, my God will supply all oh your Lord. needs. Caught it. Yeah. Because of, of, of your giving. Mm -hmm. Giving and, re and receiving is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But when we corrupt it and take Jesus out of it and take the gospel out of it, this is what we have to correct it. So all I'm saying is bring the gospel back into the giving message. Pastor Benny, thank and you. And the Lord. Hallelujah. That's it. Thank you. And uh, I wish we had more time and we have to do this again. I love it. We have to next time. We want to look at the legacy of some of these great men. I would love to. And do women of you. God. What has become of their legacy. You come and be with me in California. I'll come in. And we will do programs for your, uh, for your stations. And let's do it together because I really, want to talk, I really wanted to spend time. We didn't have a chance yeah. to talk about what I learned from Oral Good. over 20 years. Rex Humboldt, yes. 
And watching the Catherine Kuhlman ministry that I, I was a part of, and I never sat and talked to her, but I learned more, more about her from her staff and why she died early. Wow. This will shock people. God, we need that. Yeah. We why need to she hear died that. early. Why she died early. I can tell you this. Oral Roberts told me, told me this. He said he walked into the hospital to pray for Miss Kuhlman, and she said to him, Don't, Do not touch me. I do not want to live. Uh, yet the operation was a success. That's all I'm going to tell you right now. Mr. Benny, thank you. And until we come your way again, live long and prosper. And remember, you need to go back to the cross. And to every preacher out there, let's go back to him crucify, which is what is required. Remember, your greatest enemy is not Satan, but your flesh.